uh, information that I presented in terms of sort of what's new in the field of gliomas was the presentation last year of the, the Indigo trial, which uh, really was the first uh, large trial to look at the role of uh, IDH inhibitors in IDH mutant low-grade gliomas. Um, IDH inhibitors have been available for a couple of years uh, to treat some other tumors, uh, uh, forms of AML and and uh, cholangiocarcinoma. Uh, and we've known about IDH mutation for a couple decades in, um, in gliomas, but in fact, over the last few years, it has become front and center in terms of a prognostic and predictive factor. And in fact, the World Health Organization has based the current uh, the classification of gliomas, uh, the initial step is whether they're IDH mutant or not, because it really portends a better prognosis and a better response to therapy. And that's with our classic therapies of radiation and cytotoxic chemotherapy. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's been great interest for a while now in evaluating IDH inhibitors in these IDH mutant tumors. And uh, there's some nice data published on ivocitinib, which is available uh, and marketed, and voracitinib, which is currently at the FDA and was the, the drug used in the trial, um, uh, showing that both of those actually at, at sort of conventional dosing get into the brain well and actually shut down the pathways that the IDH mutation upregulates. So there's some very nice data that uh, so step back, in brain tumors, one of the key things for any therapeutic is, does that agent actually get into the brain and reach the tumor and reach the target? And does it reach the target at sufficient concentrations to and, and for su significant duration of, of exposure to actually hit the target and shut it down and change the, you know, the physiology and behavior of those cells in that tumor? And because of the blood-brain barrier, many, many, many drugs and compounds and agents simply don't get in to the brain in uh, concentration sufficient to, to do anything, to, to hit a target, uh, let alone gliomas have a relative paucity of driver mutations and, and targets worth, worth hitting. But the IDH inhibitors, ivacitinib and voracitinib, uh, have been shown in a window of opportunity study to get in there, to hit the target, and to really at least 90% or greater downregulate all of the aberrant pathway activations that the IDH mutation leads to. So very exciting sort of observation and set of compounds. And this indigo study was the first to show in essentially previously untreated patients with low-grade gliomas, untreated except for a surgical approach, a biopsy resection, uh, patients who had been stable and were being watched or followed, uh, those patients were randomized in this trial to either observation, uh, placebo, uh, or this uh, newer IDH inhibitor, voracidinib. Voracidinib gets into the brain quite well and hits both IDH1 and IDH2, so it's a little bit different than the currently marketed ones. Um, and with relatively short follow-up, uh, a significant difference in uh, progression-free survival was, was seen in favor of the treatment arm, uh, almost a tripling of the, the sort of time to progression. Uh, and there, there was another endpoint, a secondary endpoint of time to next intervention, that is, those patients, were they sick? Did they need something else done uh, right away? And, and that also was quite favorable in, in favor of the, the treatment arm. So that drug and that data has been presented to the FDA and to the EMA or the European Regulatory Agency. Um, and I think uh, most of us, if not all of us, expect that it will be approved, likely in both settings. They had had conversations, I believe, with both agencies prior to the study. and formulated the study in a way that you know positive results should lead to to uh, approval and so we hope that by the end of the year we'll have yet another idh inhibitor available but in this case one that really one would think based on the data and the properties would be the primary one we would try to use in at least idh mutant low-grade gliomas so that's exciting it's a it's a a bit of a um it, it, the case in 
as is the case in all, in all brain tumors, they're, they're orphan diseases. The, the, the um, numbers of patients affected per year really are dwarfed by those affected by lung cancer and breast cancer and prostate cancer, but they're not insignificant. And there's probably about 4,000 patients a year diagnosed with low-grade gliomas, uh, at least adults and, and some kids. Uh, it tends to be a disease of younger patients. And those younger patients, by being afflicted younger in age and surviving you know, longer periods, have a long time to be affected by the disease and its treatment, both positively and negatively. So historically, the side effects of our current therapies like radiation and chemotherapy lead to a lot of long-term issues in these patients with neurocognitive toxicity, memory changes, those sorts of things. And so the idea, this, this IDH inhibitor, at least in the setting tested in the Indigo trial, um, um, you know, might, might represent a way to delay treatment with radiation and or cytotoxic therapy. Um, and, um, you know, that's exciting. But like all good research, it, it raises a lot more questions than it answers. And, um, you know, one of the questions will be, well, what about in previously treated IDH? Uh, mutant tumors previously treated with radiation and or chemotherapy. What about higher grade tumors? What about combinations, uh, you know, with, uh, with the other modalities and agents we have available? So lots of really interesting and important questions that we're going to have to spend a lot of time now over the next bunch of years sorting out. And people are starting to initiate some of those trials and also starting to publish their experience with um, uh, you know, with sort of single institution experience with compassionate use of some of these agents. So um, in, in the field of brain tumors, we don't often have something to get excited about, you know, something that's so markedly positive that, that it changes practice. Those have been few and far between in our field. And so for that reason, um, this was a pretty, uh, pretty important and I'm not sure it was stunning, but it was, it was incredibly impactful. Uh, uh, data presentation that was published, you know, in the New England Journal shortly after uh, the ASCO presentation at the plenary session. So very exciting for those of us who take care of folks with brain tumors, where advances have been few and far between over the last several decades, unfortunately.